We are separating ourselves from the president's news conference underway right now in Washington in order to bring you a lot of local news regarding the coronavirus. Uh, the president talking about a couple of major developments among them, um, and a big one is that the Department of Housing is going to suspend all evictions and foreclosures until the end of April. And another big news item coming out of this press conference is the president is invoking the Defense Production Act. He said he will use it if he needs to, but it is going to be there. That act was uh, brought into being back in 1950 or the Korean War. What it basically does is it allows the president to influence industries for national defense. And in this case, he can influence industries and get industries to crank up their production of things like ventilators and other medical equipment. So that's why he went ahead and invoked the Defense Production Act today. And one other thing that he did that doesn't really have a direct impact to us here in San Antonio, by mutual agreement, the U.S.-Canadian border is now closed to all non-essential traffic. So that, those are the main three yep. things that came out of the news conference. There's going to be a news conference in a few minutes from the state. If anything develops in that news conference in Arlington with the governor, we'll bring it to you. Once again, local news, the county has extended its public health emergency declaration just over an hour ago. Commissioner's court agreed to extend the seven-day declaration Judge Wolf made on Friday by 90 days starting today. And any specifications in it are effective for 30 days from today. Now, to explain what that means and what else county officials are working on, Garrett Berger joins us now live from the county courthouse. They just briefed media members. So, Garrett, tell us, anything changing with this extended declaration for the county? Yes, there's a little, a little bit. Now, this was adjusted slightly from the judge's origi original declaration. We're still waiting for the full terms. What we do know is that it goes from prohibiting crowds of 500 plus to be in line with the city of prohibiting crowds of more than 50. And that would affect countywide. Like the city's declaration, it would not affect restaurants or bars, though. Meanwhile, county leaders, though they've also been trying to prevent the spread of COVID-19. They're also planning on how to help local mom and pop businesses and residents who have been affected by this pandemic. Right now, Commissioner Justin Rodriguez said the county is working out how to invest $5 million in local businesses whose revenues have been hit hard because of COVID-19. Businesses would be able to get zero interest loans, the commissioner said. He also spoke of $250,000 worth of grants, though it's not clear if that's on top of that $5 million or a part of it. Now, the loans would have a four-month grace period to make payments, and the commissioners expect to have a plan they can approve at their next meeting on Tuesday. Um, as an example, you know, we might be able to deploy a $10,000 loan to a small business to, meet their, to meet, help meet their payroll. Um, if we're able to do that, um, that's about 500 small businesses in our community that we can help. Rodriguez said they'd also soon be announcing details on efforts to partner with different organizations for a COVID-19 disaster response fund that could help families whose budgets are suffering or who need resources because their kids are now now have to be home. Judge Wolf had previously ordered landlords not to evict any tenants, and he says all the justices of the peace have agreed to go along with that and not push any of those cases forward. And today, the county tax assessor and collector, Albert Uresti, says he has canceled all tax foreclosure sales for the months of April and May. And he's working with the sheriff's office to see if they can cancel mortgage foreclosure sales as well for that same time period. Obviously, everything is rapidly developing. You can make sure to get all of the latest updates on what your local officials are doing on KSAT 12. Watch us here and online at KSAT.com. Live for KSAT 12 News, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Obviously, a lot of moves in order to help people get through this period of social distancing that's going on right now. There is one way that you could feel closer to your friends and neighbors, though, by maybe helping them out. And right now, the Texas diaper banks say that they need help. They're asking for diapers and donations. The Texas diaper banks say it expects more and more people to soon need diapers, incontinence supplies, and period products. They're trying to get ahead of the anticipated need by increasing the amount of products they give out each month. Here's what they're looking for. Diapers, menstrual pads, not liners or tampons, incontinence products, and wipes. And if you want to do this, you don't have to go anywhere to do it. All you have to do is find the items on the organization's Amazon wish list 
and then you can make financial donations online at texasdiaperbank.org. As our community and our country struggles to overcome the effects of the coronavirus, blood donations are needed even more these days to help the supply. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center and the city of San Antonio holding a special community blood drive at the Alamo Dome. Last all week, Max Massey has been live from the Alamo Dome all morning. So Max, now we know the blood donations are important, but what about the precautions because of this virus? Hey guys, there are several layers of security right now to prevent the spread of any illness. So take a look. That is where you start. You walk through the doors, you go through the metal detectors, you get your hand sanitized. And the first thing they do is actually take your temperature. And then from there, you actually go into one of these little stations that is blocked off from each other. You get deemed healthy enough to see if you can donate blood. And from there, after several steps of actually sanitizing your hands through this whole process, you come here. This is the waiting area. Take a look, you can see it is not packed. They're keeping people at safe distance. That social distancing. Again, guys, a lot of layers of security, a lot of precautions, everything to do to stop the spread of illness. So the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center saying an additional 600 donations of blood per day are needed, especially those with type O blood. Now, hospitals have already begun to postpone elective surgeries as the supply of blood decreases. Now, we've seen a steady flow of donors throughout the morning, 257 appointments made for just today. And we spoke to one woman who tells me her motivation is that she has a rare blood type. And then we actually caught up with Senator Jose Menendez, who says he is doing everything he can to help save lives. I actually have a rare blood type. So I came out and I was like, people need it, I have it, so I thought I'd share. Every donation that someone comes down to give could save up to three lives. And so it's simple, it's easy, it's essential, and, and it's safe. You know, the reason they picked the Alamo Dome is because it's large enough to spread people out. Now, the blood drive was supposed to be held from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on just Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But just a few minutes ago, I actually learned that this has been extended. It will be 6 or 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Friday as well. And if you're interested, you need to make an appointment, and you can do so right now. We have all that information available to you. Just head to KSAT.com. David, Ursula. Thank you so much, Max. Now, our KSAT community partners in University Hospital are also holding a blood drive. It will take place on Friday, March 20th from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. That's this Friday. You're going to need to make an appointment to participate, though. The blood drive will be held at 8401 Data Point Drive. We have a link to sign up for this on KSAT.com slash KSAT Community. And another case that community event aims to help Meals on Wheels. The organization still up and running despite coronavirus pandemic. They're delivering meals to seniors in need. And that's why we're teaming up with our community partners to host a phone bank tomorrow to take donations. That phone bank is happening from 9 a.m. until 9.30 p.m. If you can't call in tomorrow, you can donate by mail. All you have to do is send a check to the address that's on your screen right now. And there are also some options for you to donate online, including the Meals on Wheels website and on their Facebook page. You can also find them on Venmo and Cash Apps. Governor Greg Abbott holding a virtual town hall meeting Thursday night so he can speak directly to people across the state. He'll talk about the coronavirus response with his officials from health education and emergency management. Of course, this is not a typical town hall because there will be no audience. So this is your chance to ask the governor a question. You can submit one on social media in writing or on video for 20 seconds or less. Use the hashtag AskAbbott to send your questions. You have until 5 p.m. tomorrow. We're partnering with NextStar Media Group to broadcast this important discussion. So you'll be able to watch it right here on KSET 12 and online on KSET.com tomorrow from 7 until 8 p.m. The rampant spread of the novel coronavirus continues to stretch around the world as we speak. As American communities weigh the possible shelter-in-place orders, at least one governor says children probably will not be back in school for months to come. As ABC's Trevor Alt reports, doctors and infected patients are warning others to take this virus seriously. The novel coronavirus pandemic continues its spread around the planet. Confirmed cases now topping 200,000 with more than 8,000 dead. And in the U.S., the virus is now in all 50 states. The mayor of New York City warning his millions of residents a possible shelter-in-place order could be coming. But New York Governor Andrew Cuomo trying to dispel fears. There is not going to be any quarantine. 
No one is going to lock you in your home. That's not going to happen. The San Francisco Bay Area has already taken similar drastic steps, now two days into its own shelter-in-place order. It's a little freaky and scary. It feels like nobody can help each other. With tens of millions of students kept home, California's governor now warning parents it could be months before kids are back in school. Many of these schools, uh, few if any, uh, will open uh, before the summer break. Those infected experiencing a myriad of symptoms trying to warn the public. ABC's Kaylee Hartung, who reported on the outbreak in Washington state, now contracting the virus herself. By the time you have symptoms, it's too late. If you have the slightest hint that something's wrong, please take this very seriously. And medical professionals on the front lines battling unprecedented demand and dwindling supplies, stressing the importance of staying home. We need to make sure that if this goes on into June, that it's a gradual rise and fall. And the way that we need to do that right now is by socially isolating ourselves and uh, and hunkering down so that we don't spread the virus. There's already well over 6,000 confirmed cases in the United States, and that number is expected to skyrocket as more testing takes place. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Back here at home in the local news, a retired assistant chief with the Converse Police Department who was killed after being hit by a suspected drunk driver was honored this morning. The funeral service for Officer Rodney Rex Reiner started at 10 this morning at the Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. It was a private ceremony, but it was live streamed on the church's website. Reiner was killed in a crash that happened back on March 10th in the 14,300 block of Nacogdoches Road. And police say 23-year-old Jenna Nicole Bernice Quatros had been driving erratically before the crash. She was charged with intoxication, manslaughter, and evading arrest. A man is dead after a driver hit him as they were both making their way to work. Police say that both the driver and the victim work at the San Antonio Parks and Recs Department. Officers tell us the victim is a 59-year-old man. He was trying to cross the street at Enrique M. Barreto Parkway at uh, Old Highway 90 when a driver hit him at around 6 o'clock in the morning. Police say the driver never saw the man. The crews did try to save the victim, but he died at the scene. So the driver did stop to help and is not facing any charges. San Antonio police say a man was killed after he was hit by a driver overnight. It happened just after 9 last night near Callahan and Ingram Road on the city's west side. Police said the man was trying to cross the road when a driver in an SUV hit him. SAPD says the driver of that SUV stopped to help and there's no indication of alcohol involved. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say he was not using a crosswalk. A man is hurt after crashing his truck into two utility poles in front of UT Health and Science Center. Police say that a man in his 30s went to a fire station at around 1132 last night and complained of having chest pain. They say the man was angry because he didn't get the attention that he wanted and then drove off. At the corner of Babcock and Louis Pasteur, he jumped the curb in his truck and crashed into the poles. He was taken to the hospital and is being investigated for DWI. And another man in the hospital after crashing his car into a stone wall on the north side. Police tell us it happened around 1230 this morning at the intersection of Encino Rio and Encino Path. That's near 281 and Loop 1604. An officer says the driver crashed through the wall and then ended up in somebody's backyard. He was taken to the hospital and police are investigating if the driver was under the influence.